Welcome to our review of Point Salad, one of the easiest to learn games I've ever played. So no disclosure here, I picked this one up at a cute little corner bookshop up in Campbellford, Ontario, while on vacation earlier this year. Now, despite being an easy to learn game, it took three designers and developers to nail down how Point Salad works. They are Molly Johnson, Robert Melvin, and Sean Stankowit. Artwork comes from Dylan Magnini with some design artwork from Sean Stankowicz as well, who was one of the designers. Uh, you can find Point Salad under 16 different names in even more countries. Uh, this is actually a Korean game originally, but what we're looking at is the North American version, which was published by AEG Alderic Entertainment Group in 2019. Now, Point Salad is a 2-6 player card game that plays in a quick 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the player count and the AP of players. This small box card game has an MSRP of $24.99 US. So Point Salad is basically just a deck of cards. You got 108 different cards that provide you with 108 different ways to score points. Now, these cards are divided evenly between six different salad ingredients. And each turn, all you're going to do is take a card, keep it for point scoring at the end of the game, or take ingredients to add to your growing tableau, your salad bowl. After all cards are drafted, the players will calculate their individual scores based on the scoring cards they collected and what's in their tableau. Player with the most points wins. That's the basics. There's a bit more to it, which we'll get to in a moment in the How to Play Point Salad part of this review. Before that, though, let's talk about the components in Point Salad, which mm -hmm. you can take a look at in our Point Salad unboxing video on YouTube. So honestly, there's not a lot to see in that video. It's probably one of our shortest YouTube videos we ever put out. As I already mentioned, you get 108 cards. They come in a serviceable dual well plastic card holder with uh, a very short, clear and organized rule book. Now the card holder insert is big enough to accommodate sleeve cards, which is a nice touch for people who like to sleeve their cards. And you may want to do this with this game, even if you're not normally a sleever. The cards themselves are two-sided. One side shows a way to score points. The other side shows a single vegetable type out of six. Now, personally, when I opened this, and you'll see this in the unboxing video, I was really hoping the extra well was for a future expansion. So far, such expansion doesn't exist, and it doesn't look like one is coming, though no. I think we would have both appreciated the bacon expansion for our salads. Yep, still waiting for it. Now, my only complaint with the quality here is big. The cards in this game seem very thin. They have a nice linen finish, but they don't feel sturdy or plasticized like some playing cards are. They actually feel quite flimsy and bend easily when being riffle shuffled. Now, so far, I haven't actually seen any bends or tears after quite a few plays, but I do worry about their long-term durability. And at this point, we have played the game more than 10 times. For a game that plays this quickly and easily, it's odd to see them make this choice. Mm -hmm. Durability is something we will be continuing to monitor and mention during the Bellhop Tabletop segment of our podcast if we do notice any future problems. Yep. So now that we know what we've got, 108 two-sided cards, what exactly are we doing with them? So you start a game of point salad by paring down the deck for an amount based on the max player count. So any but the max player count. Play, max player count, you're good to go. You use the whole deck. But other than that, you pair the deck down. Now, this could involve either counting off so many cards to use or removing a set number of cards from the deck and playing with what's left. For example, with two players, you actually just count out six of each veggie. But with five players, you instead remove three of each veggie from the deck. Interestingly, at two and three players, the actual rec they actually recommend you also split up the rest of the cards so that for two players, you end up making three decks and playing three full rounds of the mm -hmm. game. And with three players, you actually split the deck in half and play two rounds. Now, note you're not just splitting the deck. You are actually evenly dividing it because you want that perfect information of knowing exactly how many, ele uh, how many vegetables are there. So you're not splitting the deck into three. You're making three sets of decks with all six ingredients. And I got to say, I dig this way to play um, where you're going to play multiple rounds that are quicker, where your point total between all games add up together. Uh, regardless of player count, though, the rest of how you play remains exactly the same. It doesn't matter how many cards are in the deck. Gameplay remains identical. So the next thing you're going to do is now that you have your separated out deck, you're going to shuffle that up really good. Now, you want to really take your time shuffling here because you just had everything sorted. You're then going to split the deck into three even piles. 
These are placed ingredient side down, so all you see are three point cards. Now, everyone should take a look at these before you start flipping things over to know which cards are out of there. But if it's your first few times playing, just to continue setting up without having everyone to see it. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to flip up two cards from each deck and put them underneath. So you have a total of six ingredients face up, which make your market. And that's it for setup. It probably took you longer to listen to that than it actually <laughs> takes to set up this game. Points out yeah. it is lightning quick to get to the table. Yeah, especially if you sort all your cards by ingredient at the end of each game. That's what I insist everyone I play with do. So that additional initial deck splitting is much quicker. Now, if you tend to always play with six players, you can probably just keep them mixed. But for any player count out of that, you're probably going to want to sort everything. So now that you have the game set up, you got three stacks of cards with six card market underneath it. The game begins. Each turn, players do one thing. They either take a point card from the top of one of those three stacks or they take two ingredient cards. If ingredient cards are taken, two new cards are flipped face up, refilling the market, but only after you've taken both cards. It's not one of those ones where the market refills instantly. The drafted cards are placed in front of you in your own little tableau where they're going to stay until the end of the game. No, there's no shifting around or stealing cards in this game. Your tableau is yours and no one can touch. It. And that's it. There's two choices. Take a point card or take ingredients. Now, additionally, once you have a point card, players do have the option to flip over one of their existing scoring cards, point cards to its veggie side. And to facilitate that, all of the point cards show what ingredient is on the other side. Now, you can only do those once a turn. Note that you cannot at any time convert a vegetable back to its point side. Right. This is a one-way street. Once an ingredient, always an ingredient. Also, note you can only flip one point card per turn, something mm -hmm. that could be a problem if you build up too many that you end up not wanting by the end of the game. Now, play continues around the table until every single card is drafted. All decks are empty and the, the market's empty as well. At that point, all you do is add up your points. The point side of every card shows some reward for having some combination of ingredients in your tableau at the end of the game. These exist in all kinds of combinations, from things like two points per carrot to five points per pair of lettuce or eight points for a set of three specific ingredients. There's at least one card that gives you 12 points for a full set of six different veggies, as well as one that gives you points for every type of veggie you don't have. Having an even number of onions and a whole lot more. Remember, you have 108 different scoring possibilities in this game. And a player with the most points wins. That's it. That's really it. If I was showing you the game in person, that teach would have been even quicker. This is basically a game I can set up and teach in under 30 seconds. It's that simple to learn. But not quite as easy to play, which leads yeah. me to the next segment of this review. Our thoughts on Point Salad. All right, so let's start off by pointing we definitely aren't the first podcasters out here, the first content creators to discover this game. And people have been talking about Point Salad since it came out and everything. Seriously, everything I have heard has been positive about this game. This isn't some hidden gem we're hoping to bring to light. This is a game that has plenty of press. And all we got to say is that it's all good. And I got to say for good reason. If anything, we're adding a new voice to a game that is perhaps quieted down some and needs a reminder for people that it's still out there. Very true. This is one of those totally brilliant games. Or once you play it, you kind of wonder, why didn't anyone think of this before? It's just such a brilliant use of two-sided cards used in such an elegant way. And the way it's so dead simple to teach. Like, seriously, under a minute for any gamer who's ever scored a game, board game before. Yeah, I expect most gamers will have some real face-slapping moments. In fact, wondering <laughs> why no one did this sooner yeah. or how such a simple concept works out so perfectly. The really impressive part here, too, is how well this dead, simple to learn game actually plays and how much actual strategy and tactics are required to play well. This is a card game with semi-perfect to perfect information. At the full player count of six, it's possible to know every card in play. At lower counts, you always know exactly how many of each ingredient are play, but what point cards are removed will be random. Once you get down to two and three players, you're back to that near perfect information because you're going to play with multiple decks that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, now most talking about perfect information, and that is knowing every card that's in the deck before things start. Right. While often perfect information means low randomness, that's not the case no. here. 
despite knowing exactly what's in the deck, may not help you at all as you don't know the order the point cards mm -hmm. or ingredients will come up. And it's very common that multiple point cards get flipped over in a single round, never to enter play as points again. Yeah, that's very true. You definitely can't sit there counting on specific cards to come up, but you can plan your veggie buys based on the knowledge that there are certain types of scoring cards that exist for each vegetable type. And especially if you're playing the multiple deck, you're going to be like, oh, you know what? That first game, an awful lot of pepper scoring came up. So there's probably going to be less in the next deck, which combined with looking what other people are collecting can definitely affect your odds of getting something useful. Yeah, watching what other people are doing can be a big part of this game. Mm -hmm. And with that comes hate drafting. Often the best move may not be to grab something you want, but rather to take something so that someone else can't have it. Now, I totally agree, though. I never felt the hate drafting felt that hateful. It did, never really felt spiteful. It didn't feel really nasty as it can in some games. And still worth noting, though, because some people are going to be turned off by the fact that there is that level of competitiveness and I guess backstabbing with the hate drafting. I think as with most games where these sort of options exist, whom you're playing with will have a big yeah. impact on the feeling you get from that sort of play. I think in most of the times for in our case, it's been, wow, they're about to get a runaway. We need to stop that. Yes. Um, and that that's it. So it's, it's not specifically stopping them from getting anything. It's stopping them from getting the clear victory. Yes. Now, besides some groups not liking a bit of take that in the card drafting, the only real problem I can see with this game is the card quality we mentioned earlier. These really are thin cards, and, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing how well they hold up. I really hope that I'm talking to you in six months or a year, and I'm like, you know what? We are wrong. Those point solid cards, they're nice and sturdy. I let my kids play with them. They're still great. I, I, I expect this game to see many more plays. We played a lot over this last weekend as we've been enjoying it a lot, so I have a feeling my game's going to see a lot of wear, and we'll have to see how it pans out. Maybe you are going to find a need for that second card, well, to hold sleeved cards after all. Yeah, and I got to say, that is a distinct possibility. I've, once I do get a fold in one of them or a bend, I'll definitely be looking at sleeving. Overall, we have absolutely been loving Point Salad. This is a truly brilliant game, the likes of which I haven't played in a long time. This reminds me of when we first discovered the Duke and we're just blown away by it, playing game after game after game. Or for back when people who joined us when we first started this podcast, Azul was that game. It felt like every week we were talking about Azul. And I have a feeling that our Bellhops tabletop segment for months to come is going to have a reference to Point Salad or two. These are all games we continue to play time and time again, even many years after getting them. And I think Point Salad's definitely going to be one of those we keep coming back to. And it's certainly not a large footprint game also. No. So depending on how you lay out your collection, you can probably fit this in at coffee shops, at least for lower player counts. I can definitely confirm it fits at coffee shops and even small tables donated by your venue. To me, Point Salad feels like it could be pretty close to a universal game, a card game that's going to be right for a huge range of gaming groups. It's light enough that party gamers should enjoy it, as should non-hobby gamers and mass market game fans. The thing is that it's also got enough tactical depth that it's going to appeal to fans of heavier games. The exception to this would be people who just hate quick filler games or that cannot abide by any take that elements in yeah. their games. While we found hate drafting common, it never felt nasty, but we know some gamers prefer to have no conflict like that at all in their games. Yeah, at this point, I recommend any game group at least give it a shot. Find a way to do a demo, talk to your local game store, or you can even try it online through Cervante. It's one of their free silver games. So supposedly we can be playing points out online. Note, I have not tried it there to know how well it's implemented, but I don't see how you can mess that one up. Well, that's it for our review of Point Salad, a super simple to learn game with surprising depth and fantastic use of two sided cards. Yeah. What's the last game you picked up and thought we're going to be playing this one for a long time coming? Tell us all about it in the comments below. Now, before I go, I do encourage you to like, share, subscribe and or follow, depending on where you're watching this. Doing so really does help more people find our content. 
And I would also like to invite you to check out my written review of Point Salad over at tabletopbellhop.com.